Emily Schindler was always hopeful that he would reform, that somehow he would come around. She was also a very devoted Catholic because we asked why she didn't divorce him. She said, no, I couldn't. I wouldn't hurt my parents by divorcing him. Besides, I love this man. I love this man. And why we were not jealous? No, when he will have only one girlfriend, I will be extremely jealous. But he has hundreds. So how could I be jealous about 100 women? Emily's joke belied hurt feelings about her marriage. She often argued bitterly with Schindler about his many lovers. Schindler's endless pursuit of beautiful women never seemed to distract him from the plight of his workers. They commuted to his factory from the Jewish ghetto where conditions were abysmal. Schindler was well aware of their misery and learned of the Nazis' plan to liquidate the ghetto. On March 12, 1943, Oskar Schindler told us when we arrived at work there that we will not be going back to the ghetto that particular evening. But the reason for that is that there is trouble in the ghetto. There is shootings, killings, and a, a liquidation of the ghetto going on. And we would be better off staying here until this is uh, over with. The liquidation of tens of thousands of Jews from the Krakow ghetto certainly had a powerful emotional effect on Oskar Schindler, who witnessed it. He would have seen beating, he would have seen dogs biting, he would have seen officers cruelly whipping and screaming and shouting and bludgeoning. Every imaginable form of destruction, including mass shootings, would have taken place at that moment. You know, a war profiteer can tolerate an awful lot. Wartime is a difficult time for everybody. But that may have been the moment when it became too much and when he recognized that something awful beyond description, beyond recognition, beyond articulation was taking place. And that may be the moment that um, changed him. Those Jews who survived that night were sent off in cattle cars to death camps like Auschwitz and Treblinka. It was all part of what was being called Hitler's final solution. Now he knew that there was a grand strategy to actually rid Europe of these people, to treat them as a virus which would be totally eradicated. He knew they weren't a virus. He knew that because he knew Stern and he knew those kids he played with as a child. Schindler's Jewish workers were sent to a brutal existence with 12,000 others at the slave labor camp at Plashoff. By day, they continued their efforts at Schindler's factory. When the work was over, they returned to the desolation of the camp a place where summary and mass executions were common. Plashoff was run by Commandant Amon Geth. According to survivors of the camp, Geth was a monster. It was no life. We were waiting for death. He was killing people and random before they went to work. Terrible memories I have when thinking that he was coming back through the yard whistling a happy tune. He was content, like a content animal. He loved to see blood. He was training the dogs how to attack people. It's very hard for me to talk about this because if it, it, it was terrible. He would give out the order to the big one, to the white rough, and the dog would hop on people and tear them apart. This was the man with whom Schindler ate and drank and bonded. But the relationship had a dual purpose. Oscar Schindler had a plan to get his Jews away from Amon Geth. <laughs> 